the time is right around the corner where we get an update for the long-term support edition of Ubuntu Linux. This round, it's called Jammy Jellyfish. You might have already noticed the jellyfish swimming in the background. That's the default wallpaper here in this 22.04 version of Ubuntu. Who else is excited for this one? Okay, you can put your hands down. Thanks for raising them. Let's check out and review what's new. First, to start out, one of the things that I really am excited about is in the appearance. We have changed things up. So now dark mode actually covers all the apps and UI spaces with this system-wide dark mode. Yes, they had dark mode before, but no, it didn't work great because some apps and some UI spaces did not adhere to this mode. Now we should have a seamless experience with dark mode. Another exciting thing is the accent colors right below. We have to mention this one because by default, it's actually orange. And now you can change the accent color to whatever you want. Let's check out this red because it appears very, very well in here. Maybe too well. If we open up something like home so we can see a few directories, notice how everything has been change to the accent color as well. We'll go back to something a little more mild, one of my favorite colors, orange. Definitely mess around with this. And speaking of the UI and apps here, we are now using GNOME 42. So if we check out about, looking down towards the bottom, we have 42 beta right now, which is one of the biggest changes here. Finally, GNOME in the 40s, that's right. This is the latest GNOME version with Ubuntu tweaks on top of it. One thing that I'm not excited about is that I've had trouble installing their latest build, so I'm checking things out currently in a live environment, which I don't necessarily like to do, but I will mention they do have a new installer. I haven't got to check it out yet. I don't know why it's not available in this build, but it uses Flutter, a open source UI framework, and looks pretty slick from the pictures I've seen. Let's real quick take a moment to talk about what we can expect next here as far as the release schedule goes for Jammy Jellyfish. Today is the 24th, so documentation, string freeze is happening, and kernel feature freeze is happening as well. The 24th, we have the beta freeze, and then all the way through until April 21st should be the final release of 2204. Mark your calendars so you upgrade your long-term support additions as well as your servers. That's one thing to mention too. We'll be receiving an updated server edition with this release as well. That's something that has me excited. A few renditions of the background here. I like the one that I currently set, but they do have this smaller jellyfish, a little more plain looking here, but let's go back to this majestic thing. One sad thing is OS Prober is no longer enabled by default. So if we go in the terminal, one sad part about this is they've disabled OS Prober by default. That means other operating systems that exist on your disk are not going to be detected by the install. So one workaround for now, if we go to Vim, Etsy, default to Grub, we can enable OSB Prober by default by adding in a new line. And we'd put in a Grub underscore disable underscore OS underscore prober equal to false. After we've done that, written things to the file. After that, we can run sudo update grub and that should hopefully grab any other operating systems located on your disk and throw them into the bootloader. I really don't like the fact that they did that. I'm not sure what they're planning on moving towards. A lot of us dual boot, so not sure what's going on there. I haven't really looked into it either. I'm sure they have their reasonings. So of course, with GNOME 42, we're gonna see refreshed GNOME applications and a new look and feel for some things, such as the settings. Let's check out settings real quick. Notice on the left-hand side, I'm gonna go back to appearance and put it back in the light mode so we can see this a little better. A rounded style for those of you who haven't seen any GNOME 42 yet. We have these subdivided sections, which don't make too much sense to me, but whatever. Overall, modern and clean looking. If we hit activities, you can notice what the workspaces look like or virtual desktops here. You can scroll between them, search up at the top, and then if you click show applications, you have all your applications that you can scroll through. Still your virtual workspaces up here at the top that you can toggle between and move applications between if you want as well. Always a nice little neat feature. They come and go as they need to be used. Another updated app here is the screenshot tool. Let's take a screenshot real quick. A new modern UI 
you can take a shot of a specific selection of the screen or the entire screen as well as a specific window if you only want to focus on that window. You can also go back to selection and change over to a video and record that video. Whether or not you want to show your pointer, this is a great tool, a great upgrade. One thing I will mention is let's take a picture of the tool itself. Well, it's smart enough not to capture the tool. As you can see, when taking the picture, it hides the tool. Great little addition to it. It'd be quite annoying if that thing showed up. We'll move right along to the App Store, see if anything's been updated in here. Not really. Everything's about the same, pretty much the same layout. You got installed updates at the top. On the left-hand side, you can search for whatever package or application you're searching for. Are you ready to start learning about Linux today? Check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. And now let's talk about the system information as well as the kernel. What are we stuck with here? Kernel 5.15. That's right. This is Ubuntu Jammy Jellyfish. I've been up for about 31 minutes. There's 1,885 source packages, eight snap packages installed. It's running Bash 5.1 with GNOME 42 as the desktop environment. The window manager theme is Iowata. The icon theme is Yaru. Terminal using GNOME Terminal. This is running on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series. And currently we're using about 1.5 gigabytes of memory out of eight gigs, which is on the heavier side of things, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's continue on to one of my favorite things here. I'll start up a file browser and now I'm going to drag and drop items all across the screen on the back of the desktop. This over the years has been contested on Ubuntu where sometimes by default you cannot put anything on the desktop and you would have to install something like GNOME Tweaks in order to turn on that feature. In recent years they've let you put certain things on the desktop but in very specific layout and now you're able to put things anywhere and everywhere around the desktop. As of a user who uses the desktop quite a lot, I'm super glad that they've done this and have by default enabled this for us. Anyways, let's just go through the desktop environment here in case you're new. Up on the left hand side, nothing new. Activity still gets you around the workspaces or gives you a search bar up top. Our default favorites here are Firefox, a web browser, Thunderbird, a mail client, files to get you to the file manager, Rhythmbox for music, LibreOffice Writer, part of the LibreOffice suite for a word processor, Ubuntu Software Center, help if you need it, and trash at the bottom. On the middle of the screen, we have the current date and time with an updated calendar. Do not disturb if you don't want to be disturbed by any notifications. Set this to on. We have a nice calendar. And then to the right of that, we have what type of language we want to use and the current keyboard layouts. Right of that, volume control, wired or wireless connection information, power savings. If you have a laptop, you can set up your power settings from here. General settings and powering off, logging out or restarting the computer from the last option. If you right click on the desktop anywhere, you can create a new folder, paste or copy, select all items, arrange icons or files, open a new terminal, change the background or get to various different settings. On the bottom left, the grid of squares gets you applications. Sur scroll through the applications. There's quite a few pre-installed for you. Change which virtual workspace you're working with or virtual desktop. And finally search up at the top for any application that you'd like. Back in the terminal, let's talk about resource usage. Right now I'm using about 1.5 gig out of eight gigs available on the system. My CPUs are going between zero and 1.3%. I have 116 tasks, 272 threads, and I've been up for 37 minutes at this point. To be honest, this is on the heavier side of things. I assume when you first start up the system, you're getting around 800 megabytes being used of memory out of your eight gigs, but since I've had it up for a while and I'm actually in the live environment right now, that's a little more intensive when it comes to using memory. Well, I've reviewed most of the new features and the desktop environment at this point. Let me know what you're excited about in the comments section below and take a moment to like the video. Subscribe below if you like Linux and programming. Hit that notification bell for more videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.